This issue has come up more and more recently, and so I want to put that question to rest. Can you do really true positional tracking using only the accelerometers, gyroscopes and magnetometer uh, in the inertial navigation unit of an Oculus Rift or any other headset? And the answer is no, you can't. Uh, and so let me show you what we have here. Uh, the program we're looking at is just a calibration visualization tool for the raw IMU data coming, in this case, from the Oculus Rift. Um, so I have a coordinate frame here that shows the global coordinate frame, and then here that little coordinate frame is the local position orientation of the rift. Uh, the red, green, and blue arrows are the x, y, and z axes respectively, and then that purple arrow is the magnetometer direction, and the yellow arrow is the direction of gravity. Uh, and so orientation tracking obviously works. I mean, that's, we know that. The reason is that the, um, the orientation is tracked by the gyroscopes, which, are, which measure linear velocity. So you integrate that once, you get orientation. So there is uh, some linear drift in there, but we can correct for it because we have an up direction and we have a direction pointing north. That's the magnetic vector. Uh, and so we can essentially have a drift-free orientation tracker. If I put this down here and come back in five hours, uh, those three arrows will still be in the exact same position as they are now. I've tried that. Um, the same is not true for positional tracking, because in order to track the position, you need to use the accelerometers, and they measure acceleration as opposed to velocity, so you have to integrate twice. You have to integrate once to get velocity, and then a second time to get position. And that is the problem. The moment you integrate twice, you're accumulating error not in a linear fashion, meaning that you have a constant speed of drift, but in a quadratic fashion, meaning that the speed of drift increases all the time. I can show this. When I wrote this calibration utility first, that was last year, when I wrote the VUI binding for the Oculus Rift, uh, I also put a positional tracker into this little utility, but I never told anybody about it because, well, it doesn't work, obviously. So let me turn it on. Uh, so now you see, right now, the position is tracked, and you can see that the coordinate frame already drifted off into infinity. What I want to do now there it is again. I just want to put the rift on a very stable surface and not move it at all. And then I reset the tracker. And so now you can see how it starts out pretty nicely. And then it starts drifting off and goes faster and faster and faster. I'm going to reset it again. And there it goes. Reset it again. And you can see how it starts off drifting very, very slowly. And then it goes faster and faster and faster. And then it goes off towards infinity. And that's exactly the point that the, that the drift accumulates quadratically. Uh, and if you don't have an external reference frame, and I actually look at how it now hardly drifts at all, I need to say that the IMU in the Rift is probably the best I've ever seen, or at least the best that I've ever worked with, in the sense that drift accumulates very slowly, but still way too quickly to be any practical use, unless you have an external way of correcting for it, an external reference frame, like an optical tracker or a magnetic tracker or whatever. Um, so now, instead of holding it still, let me show you how it looks like when you start moving it around. Um, so I'm going to reset it again, and if I move it to the right, the coordinate frame moves to the right, move it to the left, moves to the left. So you see that for, for maybe a fraction of a second or so, okay, this is a really bad example, the tracking works. Uh, I can move to the left, I can move to the right, here we go, and I can move back. But the moment I start doing this, um, the noise that gets integrated into the position solution just becomes very big very quickly, and now we're already a couple of meters off me, and it's completely useless. Uh, it can absolutely be used to do some dead reckoning to reduce the latency of an external reference tracker, like a slow optical tracker, but that is really what you need to do. You can't use it by itself. Now, in all fairness, I didn't really spend all that much time developing this. It took me literally about five minutes uh, to hack the position integration into this utility, the reason why I never spend more time on it is because I know even if I had spent a month on it, it still wouldn't have worked. Uh, but that's exactly the point. Um, it works for instantaneous detection of motion, but it doesn't work uh, to measure the precise absolute position of the rift, which is of course what's needed uh, in order to create the illusion of a holographic display. So meaning, yes, you can use this to let's say, detect that the player or the user just took a step to the right or a step to the left and then translate it into keyboard control for an application or for a game, but that is not the point of positional tracking. That is a secondary use at best. What we really need is to be able to measure, I have just moved 10 centimeters to the right and now I stopped moving, and now I'm moving 10 centimeters to the left again, and now the tracker should be at the exact position where it was initially, but obviously it isn't. And that's why this doesn't work.
So that's pretty much uh, the, the verdict on that. Um, having an IMU, especially a good one like in the Rift, is really a very great way of getting a low latency positional tracker by combining it with some other, me uh, some other method, but it will not work by itself. It just is not going to happen. So there we are.